did, we started doing it and as we were painting it, I did a top to bottom. I did a top to bottom, I think it was half a car or something like that. Um, and all of a sudden I, I'd looked under the train and you just saw these little, like, creeping like ninjas, dude. You know, like <gasps> on the other side of the train, like security, yeah? Or whatever, police, I don't know who they were. They just, it was the eeriest feeling ever. Cause they, they were creeping. You know, it wasn't like they were running. Usually when you go to a yard and they catch you, they go, oi! Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and you're like, okay, let's run. But these guys were like sneaking up on us. Ugh. And then I was just like, run, run. Tequila Killer Podcast. Tequila Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, could be, could try to be, but you won't get any closer than this. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. This is the place of street culture. And if you want more, go to the television app. Free download, iPhone, Android for your sport and art, street culture and all. Uh, we've been big docs, mini docs, uh, mixes on the Taurus podcast that we endure <laughs> every week. Inside the house, we're in for a right treat. Man, this this gentleman's name has been one that has kind of orbited along my early uh, years in street culture and music and more. Uh, part of the uh, TIFF H crew, SB, uh, Live Wires, we have... 90s favourite scholar inside the place. What are we saying, my brother? How you doing, man? You good? <laughs> good. How are you? Very good, man. Very good. I mean it when I say it. There's some characters that, you know, you keep the rod in the water long enough and eventually they bite. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a while, man, and it's a pleasure to see you. Good to see you, man, as yeah. well. Good and I'm a man of travels as well. You, you've travelled quite a lot since the, the graffiti days, right? I guess I've been around a bit, around, yeah, like New York probably, um... Yeah, New York, Belgium, now London. Yeah, so I've been around. So for some, isn't it? Huh? Huh? Is that is that is that is that spearheaded by the graph itself? Uh, it got influenced from the graph, I guess. You know, like graffiti influenced what I went into, which was like design, hmm. uh, graphic design. I actually remember seeing the word graphic design. I was like, sounds a bit like graffiti. <laughs> yeah, so like graffiti design. I come in, and I was like, that's me. That's me. So uh, yeah. So that's I sort of evolved through the whole, yeah, creative side. Yeah. It's funny because we just we had a chat before we started. You understand? Um, and uh, there's there's certainly a wider, as we know, a wider graph culture, a, kind of re relining yourself to a nine to five. Uh, dare I say it, corporate point of view of doing creative art that leans heavily on graph. How how easily was that adaptable? It was actually, so I went to art school here in London um, and actually I was told at art school, they just told me like, get rid of all the graffiti from all of your work. Like, don't do any graph in your, in your artwork. So I literally made a big point of like removing graffiti from all of my work uh, and... It kind of helped in a way because, um, you know, I was, I was in trouble with the law a lot. So, like, it meant that all my, <laughs> not everything I had was graffiti, you know, mm. orientated. Um, and, but, uh, yeah, so, like, it's basically everything to do with my design and graphics, I kind of removed the graffiti element from it, um, which was crazy. Um, and then, you know, like, but it's come full circle, hasn't it? So mm. everyone's like, you know, everyone's everyone, doing it now. Yeah, everyone's doing it now. Yeah, <laughs> even so, your local podcast presenter having a go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of did full circle, but yeah, no, I, I tried really hard to get it out of my design, but yeah, it it was. I should have kept it in the whole time. Really, know? really, did you miss it? Was it? Um, uh, yeah, I missed it. You know, for sure. And it, it was uh, it was a lot of the flavor. I remember, like you know, being in New York and. Uh, um, you know, my, my creative director at the time, or my boss, let's say, whatever, was trying to educate me on graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was, he just didn't even know, you know, the half of it. So I had to educate him. Um, that's my, because you know what, you do have, you know, we'll get into this in more depth as we go, you see. But 
you know, you, you've had a life of many lives. And what's interesting is that, you know, it's a bit Clark Kent Superman with the whole graph thing. It's like when someone starts giving you the third degree about, you know, <laughs> during the war, you know, yeah, of yeah, graph, and you're yeah. just like, bro, like, I've done God knows how many panels. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> that must be quite a tough, you know, pill to swallow, right? Um, yeah, the, the, yeah, it is definitely. I mean, I think I remember at art school, there was this one kid uh, and he was just so obsessed with the graffiti I was doing. So he decided to do a project on graffiti and uh, and I remember my teacher just turning around at me going, look, you should be doing something like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you're like, look, look what Ray's done. He's done this amazing, he's gone out there and put a wheat paste up on the wall. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, winner, winner. And you're yeah. like thinking of the damage yeah. I've done. Yeah. Um, your time in Graf, as mentioned, was heralded by... Uh, um, the influx of garage music and drum and bass was rife. Um, yeah, it was it was almost like the the UK's time, uh, and you were very much immersed in that. And you saw Graf as one and the same. We're talking about late late nineties here. This, this was this was the culture that you were intro, introductory to, right? Yeah, for me, it wasn't it wasn't the hip hop culture which really took hold of me into into Graf, and I didn't I didn't I didn't see the two together. And mm. uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like. You know, like I saw the hip. I know, I know, graffiti originated in New York and all of that sort of stuff. But for me, I was like, no, no, London's the place. Like we're we're building our own culture. And it used to wind me up if I saw someone with a New York Yankees hat on. I'd be like, what are you doing wearing a New York Yankees hat, dude? Mm-hmm. You're from London. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. this is London. You know, like um, so. I used to like be really, and I was like, we're about garage. We're not about hip hop. Mm-hmm. And like you know, I used to go to those scenes, and you know, all the writers would be there, whether it be garage or drum and bass, but. <laughs> For me, it was like, you know, it wasn't really about hip hop. It was about building this own sort of subculture within London. Mm. Um, and I enjoyed it. And it and it, th- and it, it really sort of, I felt, I felt like that was the undertone of London. And, you know, like when you talk about, I used to, I used to always compare it to New York because people were like, oh, hip hop, New York, mm. you know. And I was like, no, it's like, it's tougher in London. You know, like, you know, like everything from the security at the, the tube trains to, you know, the tube yards to like, you know, comparing it to what the security is in New York. I'm like, you know, we had the IRA trying to bomb the tube trains, yeah? yeah? So, like, because of that, we had laser trip wires, we mm. had pressure pads, we had tremor tremor wires on the fence. You know, we had night vision, you know, CCTV, um, and we were able to break through that. So, for me, I was like, this is this is hardcore. You know? Yeah, and awards for breaking, you know, breaching security like that, you know, security should be taking the penalty, not the graph writer, isn't it? <laughs> Surely. Uh, dude, um, if you weren't in, well, if you were inspired, but, you know, to have come from a different angle. Where did it all begin? Where did it all begin for you in terms of influences? Who, who were the first writers that you So for were me, to? I went to school just west of London and then I had a kid who used to come in. He's my best friend at the time, um, but he was from Ealing. How old were you then? Um, I was probably 16, 15, maybe 15. Mm. Um, and so he used to come in and he used to just do these little graffiti tags on his book. And it was actually probably only those who know, but it was like this, these two writers, Cruel and Earn. Huge. Um, but this is like, yeah, I mean, you know, we're talking about 95, you know, yeah. around that time. And uh, they were just, they were, they were kind of Ealing based, you mm. know, and they just used to do track sides around Ealing. And it was one, one of them was my mate's brother, Cruel was. Um, and so we used to just always like, I used to hang around in Ealing a lot. And it Quite was a tall just, guy, Cruel, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I bumped into him. Yeah. Yeah, down at uh, uh, Riverside. Yeah. But when I never, I never talked graph with him. I was just like mm. uh, his little brother's friend. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and then uh, so that sort of triggered me into it. And me and my mate used to just you know back of the back of the maths books, just sketching out graffiti on the tables, you know, in the toilets at school. And then my cousin lived in Neasden. Mm-hmm. I remember I used to get a tube to go up to see him. And I just remember there was this June piece. It was it was not a piece. It was a dub on the platform at Neasden. And it just like for some reason, I just thought it, it was just so crisp. It looked like someone yeah. just got a sticker and just stuck it perfectly on the wall. Oh, Everything about it was months. just perfect, <sighs> you know. And it was like for me, I was just like June, you know, like and I just yeah. see June everywhere. And then sometimes I used to get a Waterloo train as well, and I see Chuck One Hundred One. Mm. And it was like those two riders for me were like they 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 they, they gave me the little buzz, and I used to notice June tags everywhere, and I used to just see that. Isn't know? it funny how it sparks imagination when you see just. You know, the simplicity of something with such yeah. impact. Yeah. It's fucking so sick. You were uh you were you were a study as well, and that's how you got the name Scholar, right? Yeah, I mean so you know, as a kid, um, you know, 
actually, I grew up abroad. I, I moved to the UK when I was like 11. Oh, right. Um, so I grew up in like Greece and Saudi as a kid, right. um, which is a whole different story. But, um, but uh, yeah, basically when I came back here, I went to a school and uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was quite good at what I did. And I got a scholarship to like one of the most prestigious public schools, which is like a private school in the UK during the 90s. Um, and it was like a 50% scholarship. And so at the time my dad was made redundant, whatever. Mm. So I couldn't go. So I never went, but I was a, I got a scholar. So I, I was like, I'm, I'm a scholar. So that's it. You know, like I got a scholarship. So sick. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, so I'll, I, I'll make my own scholarship out of being a scholar, right? <laughs> exactly. So I became a street scholar. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, uh, that was it. Then uh, I ended up going to a local state school, got expelled, you know, like, you know, went down a whole spiral, you know, ended up in art school, and then that's where I am today, you know? Talk to me about that spiral. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Graf was part of that spiral. Definitely. I mean, like, you know, I don't want to overanalyze it, but it was, it was at a time... Overanalyze it, your podcast, overanalyze away. <laughs> yeah, it was at a time, obviously, when uh, my mum my and dad probably split up, you know, like, and I was at this school, you know, like, trying to, like, make my way, make my name, you know, like, trying to figure out who I am and got into graph, you know, mm -hmm. so I'd go literally straight from school, I'd get on the train up to Ealing, um, and then uh, I'd just be out the whole day, and I'd say I was staying at my mate's house in Ealing, and I'd just be out painting trains, you know. I'd come back in the morning, I'd go, go into school, straight into school with like silver chrome all over my hands, you know, like in the same uniform I slept under a tree with, <laughs> like doing an all-nighter. Dirty bastard. And then uh, just go straight back into school and just get on with it. And no you know? one questioned no you. No one questioned, yeah, I know. Um, actually, my mum my knew what I was doing and she she was kind of inspired by it until, you know, like uh, the police came knocking, but, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> until then she was like, oh, this is amazing. It's creative, you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, the consequences are pretty major, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you mentioned also uh, that you've never bought paint in your time of... Yeah, graph. I mean, so like, yeah, and that was part of, I guess, the whole culture. It was like, there was a few rules. I remember... Was it Spray Can Art, that book? You know, the old mm. New York, was it Spray Can Art? Yeah. Um, and it just told you the rules of graffiti, you know, like, you know, toys, you know, this, that, you know, racking, you know, all of that. And you, you never pay, buy your paint. And, like, you know, I stood firm by that. You mm -hmm. know? To this day, I, I never bought a tin of paint in my life. You mm -hmm. know? So, like, everything I ever did was racked. And so we used to go out on missions. It would be me, Blink, Touch, uh, a load of the SB crew, original, never back then. Mm. Don't know what happened to never, shout out. Yeah, big up, um, all of you lot. And uh, we used to could just go up to like places like Newbury, Oxford, like even further afield, you know, like where just complete bumpkin places where mm. no one even knew what graffiti was. And you'd turn up at the, the B&Q and they would literally just turn up there and you just load up your cricket bag full of paint. It's <laughs> just fucking And mad. literally walk out the store. Um, I think my tactic was I used to tuck my T-shirt in. I used to have a giant polo sport puffer jacket. And I used to just tuck my T-shirt in and just chuck everything down my T-shirt and then just come out like this. I couldn't even, I couldn't even put my <laughs> hands down mentioned. by my sides because <laughs> there was just so many tins in there. Um, and then you always used to have your little plots, like your belt-on plots and mm. your bunt lac plots. And uh, you never told people where they no, were. No, because it gets too you know? hot. Yeah, yeah, you never told people. And then you'd turn up there and then all of a sudden there'd be a little like take tag and you're like fuck <laughs> <laughs> they beat us yeah they're here your uh, your name is synonymous alongside the likes of Chang um, and Touch and like you know the aforementioned but you know Chang more spe specifically uh, you know I spoke with him about it and big up Chang by the way Chang uh, yeah it's, it, it was almost like a double headed monster <laughs> I mean Chang I mean he was my partner in crime so like we were like thick as thieves um, I was actually probably like probably three years younger than him, um, and uh, I kind of take the claim that I corrupted him. You know, like he was, you know, I meet him down at Hall of Fame. He was always like, a mild boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never had any problems. And I remember I met, I took him out, and it was the FLS crew, and we went down to Stroy. Mm. Like he was like, oh yeah, what's going on? I was like, yeah, I'm painting with some writers in London. Come, come with me. I went straight in my school uniform, took him out. He was, um, he was friends with my my, my older sister. And then we ended up meeting down at the Grundy and Q. And it was like Gash, Blink, uh, a load of other people, Kano, Never, I don't remember who it was. Uh, and then we ended up going, like, let's just go and do, uh, do, do Strawberry Hill. So we just went over to Strawberry Hill and just started spray painting like some BR trains and, uh, and just got on it, you know? Yeah. And uh, 
And then from then on, I was like, Chang, you're a train rider now. Let's do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, <laughs> and that's yeah, forged and, the And that alliance. was it. Yeah, and that was it. And then we used to just always go out uh, up into London into missions yeah. um, all the time. So then, like, uh, Chang's house was like the HQ for TFH. We'd just always be chilling there. You know, like, it's just, you could turn up there anytime. You could just throw a stone at the window and Chang would, like, open up. <laughs> that's so you know. cool. It's exactly how I want to believe it. Yeah. That's, that's the way it should be, right? <laughs> yeah. It was but you good. were super young at the time. You I guess. mean, yeah, I was young. So 16, 17, you know, pushing on 18. We used to go, I was probably 15 when I first met Chang. And then, yeah, people are probably frown on that, but, you know, mm. nowadays. Super you know, like, young. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, then we used to go raving. So then, but then again, like, uh, yeah, we used to go to, what was it? Garage Liberties back in the day, Coliseum, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh, Twice uh-huh. is Nice, yeah. you know, all, all, all those sort of Cookies races. and Cream. And Cookies and like Cream, yeah. yeah. That's, that was it Secret Sundays, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we used to just literally, I never had a fake ID which said I was like 26 when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the connect. Who, yeah, who was the connect yeah, on that? Yeah, I forget what it was. It was like <laughs> NUS card or something. I forgot what it was called. Um, but yeah. Those are the days. Comment below. You know what yeah. it is. <sighs> yeah, it was of a time, wasn't it? You um, you were also, in my mind anyway, widely regarded, not just within the London um, circuit, but, you know, you'd be out in the, the deeper areas of um, Berkshire, Reading. yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, I went to art school in like, uh, uh, I did a foundation or something like that in Reading. So I ended up going out at that end quite a bit. Um, and then actually, actually, yeah, I met met a couple of writers there, Wrench, Jabs. Mm-hmm. Big up Wrench, Jabs, um, come on. So again, I was like young and I, I, I actually met them. They used to be a Hall of Fame um, I used to go to as a kid and it was at Ascot Hall of Fame and it was just like... Legendary. It was, it was like literally everyone from all over the world would end up in Ascot. And I think there was like, I forgot what those videos were, there was one of those... Visual graphics. Visual graphics yeah. was one of the videos was down at yeah, yeah. Ascot. So then everyone used to go there. And then as a kid, you know, like I used to get the train from there. Um, I had a girlfriend who lived in like Guildford or something like that. So I used to come walk down as a 13 14 year old and i'd walk the shortcut was past the you know this this uh this hall of fame and i used to just see people down there i was like wow what is that about it's crazy you know, i want to get into that and i used to go down there and find the old spray cans and just like try it s- try it out you know um yeah so uh that's that's what got me into it and then uh yeah and then that's where i met chang actually i was chang was down there painting one time and then I remember I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you want to paint? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, I remember they gave me a lift back on their, they had a little Jeep and I hung on to the back of the Jeep. And they <laughs> What? Dude, you're, you're kind of like born into it in a way. <coughs> it's like you saw those early pieces, but you were always into the art. Yeah. You know, it's, everyone gets into it for their own reasons at different times. and But yours was definitely more of a creative, a creative So, space. I mean... It definitely, I mean, like I went, you know, I went to art school. Uh, you know, I'm one of those people who can, I can, I can, I can draw. You know, you mm. look at a bottle, you can draw it perfect. I can do that. Mm. You know, but when it came to graffiti, I kind of like put myself in the realm of I like to consider myself more of a vandal. Mm. You know, like I was trying to destroy the system. You mm. know, like it was. Uh, yeah, I wasn't into the arty side of it. I was like, you know, literally, if I if I met a writer, I was like, do you paint trains? Do you paint tubes? It was it. It was like it wasn't trains. It was tubes. Like if you painted BRs, I still had no like British Rail. You know, I had no interest. If you're painting tube trains, I was like, okay, now, now we can we're now we can talk. Yeah. You know, like, um, and that was it. And it was like, they don't paint tubes. Uh, you know, I can't talk to them. That's <laughs> you know, crazy. Like, um, but then also, I think that was that was it. I like it was an adrenaline kick. You know, you're going to paint a tube train. It was like you know, you'd be like high high edge. You know, the, mm. the buzzing of the tracks. Bzzz, mm. You know, like there'll be like noises in the yard. You're cutting through a fence. You know, like mm. you're scoping the place out. There's a security guard. You know, he's there. You know, and you're just waiting for him. And you're like, okay, he's gonna come back in half an hour. He just walked past. Let's go in. You know, like mm. it was like a buzz, and you've got like you know, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes to do a piece. Well, we're talking um, in hindsight now. Explain a little bit more in detail that that feeling. That you know, well, you, you know, we're talking about history here. It's not it's yeah. Not, we're gonna do it. Uh, your time that was spent. What was it? What did it feel like? How high was the anxiety levels in crossing um, that line? I mean, so like anxiety, I mean, for me, it was more excitement, you know, like uh, it was just, I just, everything about it, I loved it. I liked the idea that, you know, it's like high security and you weren't going to be there and we could figure it, you know, we could figure out how to get in there. You know, like, uh, you know, like you watch all those movies about bank robberies or whatever mm. it may be and you're like, 
you know, if I wanted yeah. to be a bank robber, I could be a bank robber. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, because yeah, you've figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, and it's it's like real, like, you know, you have to figure it out. Sometimes with the SB crew with Touch and Blink, it would just literally would go in there and just like be chaos. You know, like, just be like, just make as much noise as possible. <laughs> like, no one cared. And then if you went on missions with like Mace, Mace was like freaking SAS soldier. Like, we were like belly crawling for like two miles, you know. <laughs> He'd figured it all out. He'd drawn a map about where all the cameras were, where the tremor wire was, where a pressure pad was. He had it mapped out, you know. But, uh, yeah, we said, yeah, it was it was crazy. It was great. It was a great, great feeling. How could you How could you go from one extreme to the other, like from, from Touch and Blink to, to Mace? Yeah, so, like, uh, when I went with Mace, it was just like, you know, we, we'd go and do a mission and we'd do it and we would come out. You know, with, with Blink, sometimes, I, you know, Touch, we'd go out and we'd paint, like, two different tube yards or three maybe in one night, mm. you know, like we'd be out all night, you know, so we'd be out, we'd get the night bus, you'd have to like be hungry, go racking, you know, like, mm. you know, I think it was Mars drinks back then, which were the, like the one. It was a lick. Do you remember yeah, them? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, we got all those nutri- <laughs> nutriment drinks, yeah, you know, like it was like that. a meal and a drink in one. Yeah, yeah, And it totally. was like, that, that would keep you going through the night. Yeah, you yeah, know? 100%. Uh, and then every now and then someone would raise a bottle of champagne and, you know, like. <laughs> winner, winner. <laughs> in the um, yard. Yeah. Bottles out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, we used to have like, you know, like on, going to the yard, you know, walking down the tracks, we just you know, having a good time, you know, like. We were kids, you know, like, uh, yeah, it reminds me of the, like, you know, this movie, Stand By Me, you know, like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. like, there, just, like, doing whatever you wanted to do against the system, you know, um, you know, no money on us, you know, like, mm. but we'd be out there living life, you know. Fun. I mean, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty. what would be fun at the age I was? I guess I was just on a music thing, but, you know, just to love these stories... When I am, ex- you know, moving forward and hearing all these stories from these writers and, you know, getting small bursts of taste of it, it it's knuckering, isn't it, being a graph writer out there? Oh, I was, dude. I mean, that's probably part of the reason why um, I, ended up, I ended up slowing down, let's say, because it was like, you know, I remember it would be like, you'd go out with all this paint, you'd be lugging around and it would be like three in the morning and or f- two in the morning, whatever, and you got like you know friends texting you. Oh, I'm going to this nightclub. I'm doing this. You're coming out. Where are you? Mm. And, like you know, people text like, where are you? What are you doing? Let's come join us. You know, mm. um, and I'll be like, I'm in a ditch. <laughs> it's pissing down with rain. I'm wet, <laughs> and I'm waiting to paint this train. Uh, you know, like yeah, yeah. and and it's raining, so it's going to be shit anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's all going to drip. And then like uh, so, I, at one point, it just it just sort of clicked. I was just like what am I doing spending my time sitting in a ditch, you know, like, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah. But, uh, I think that was, that was it. Yeah. It, it's exhausting. And it was exhausting being up and it was challenging and it's literally like, I was a sucker for peer pressure and like, we all did peer pressure to each other. So like, you know, I'd call up Blink and I'd be like, you, we're going to paint a train tonight. He's like, nah. And I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to go. And he's like, you're going to go? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go and do it, do, do a, do a yard. Like, all right, I'm coming. <laughs> really? It's just and it'd be like, like that. And it'd be like, then, you know, like, I remember like, yeah, Blink would call me up or Touch or someone. Like, you know, like, we're going tonight. You're coming. You know, um, I'm like, you got paint, you know. Um, what paint have you got? You know, and I'm like, oh, bring the belt on. Bring the belt on. You know, like, we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> oh man, so you literally fall down a rabbit hole yeah, of, yeah, you know, yeah. it was about the, the ones you got the other day. Yeah, should we get... yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like that. It was... Uh, That's addiction, man. It was, it was. And it was like, but it was, it, it was like, you know, once you did it, and then you saw the, the panels run. It was like, you know, we used to plot it out. We used to plot out the, the, the maps, like the central line. And we said like, okay, like, I mean, need to walk from here to there. And then like, you know, I think I walked end to end the central line, apart from the underground bits. But like, we used to map it out. Like, and now I need to cover from here to there. Um, there's, I think there was 38 yards in London, which are tube, but all the tube trains lay up. Um, and, it's a uh, guesstimation, by the way. Don't, we don't all know this stuff. Right? I think there's 38. I, th- yeah. I don't know, we used to do it. Like, uh, bec- uh, I don't know. Have you got any facts on that? No, no, no facts. Um, <laughs> and like, you know, like I painted over half of them, but we're like, we need to paint every single one. Yeah. Maybe my facts could be wrong. It's been a while. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I remember I painted over half the yards in London, but it was just like, okay, now we've got to do this one. How are we going to do that one? Now we've got to do that one. Um, so we're like ticking them off, you mm. know? And then the the thing is, is, is it was, you had to get a tag inside the yard, you know, because then people know, mm. you know, because some of your shit, people don't even know what you're doing because... Mm. 
Sometimes we don't even take cameras with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't even roll, whatever. So like to get a little like you have to get a strategic strategic tag inside the sheds or whatever. Mm-hmm. Some people say it's baited it up and it, they know where we come in. All that stuff is like no, you have to do it. Yeah. yeah. So who, what was the most common tag in the yards that you'd see? I mean, it's probably all the DDS crew. You know, mm. you'd see there. So it'd probably be Zombie Ray. Mm. Uh, you know, Fume, mm. Bozo. Crazy. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Always teach. Mm. You know. Teach, teach at the best style, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Every time you sort of teach piece, you're yeah. like, oh, that's crazy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just always nice. Yeah. And um, and from an art background as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Um, any uh, mad escapes, chases? Um, have, you, have you ever been electrocuted or anything a f- crazy? A few, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, one time was Hammersmith, Hammersmith Yard. Uh, yeah, we literally we were just in there. It was early days. Must have been ninety seven. And we literally blitzed the whole entire yard. We were doing throw-ups on the front of the trains, like all the undersides of the tubes that they'd run. And then I remember I was just doing a throw-up on the front of the train and I just looked to the left of me and there was just some 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 guy walking towards me with a clay jacket, which is like big green jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, green, orange, orange jacket. Yeah. And just walking towards me and I just remember looking at him, just went back, finished finished doing my little quick throw-up and I was like, oh my like you know, yeah. <laughs> guys <Ooh>. run! <laughs> you know, like it was just like we were Classic just so Benny casual. Hill double take. We were just yeah. so casual in there. We were just enjoying life, and everyone was just doing their little thing. We we're like bum bum bum. So then we like sprinted out of there, and I think we, as we were running out, I think it was Blink got like hit the third rail and got electrocuted or something like that. And he's like, dude, I think I just got, I think I just got electrocuted. I th- and uh, I looked at him and his hair was like... Whoosh. No way, <laughs> no way. Yeah, it was like the blink or gash. Uh, but yeah, it was funny. Um, but uh, yeah, and it gave him a boost as well. I remember, I think pretty much like... Phew. I remember we were getting chased and it was like, phew, hit it. <laughs> really? Yeah, Man, gave him some momentum. Mad. Um, but uh, you know, that, was a, that was a good one. A good chase, uh, or a crazy one, which is sort of like added to it, was us in Paris actually. <laughs> Um, went out there with Mace, went out there with Chang, went out with a Fu, used to do bomb alert back in the day. Yeah, I remember. Um, and we stayed at my uncle's house in Paris and we were painting these, uh, trains just, 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 I think on the outskirts of Paris. And as we were getting in there, we, you know, as we were climbing over the fence, I think Fu cut his hands and there was like a lot of blood. And we're like, okay, we're just going to carry on and do it. You mm-hmm. know? Um, so we went on. We did, we started doing it, and as we were painting it, I did a top to bottom, I did a top to bottom, I think it was half a car or something like that. Um, and all of a sudden, I, I looked under the train, and you just saw these little, like, creeping, like, ninjas, dude. You know, like, <gasps> on the other side of the train, like, security, yeah? Or whatever, police, I don't know who they were. They just, it was the eeriest feeling ever, because they were... They were creeping. You know, it wasn't like they were running. Usually when you go to a yard and they catch you, they go, oi! Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, let's run. But these guys were like sneaking up on us. Ugh. And then I was just like, run, run. You know, like that. so we ran, yeah. jumped over the fence, or maybe that's when Fu cut his hand. And, uh, and we were hiding in these bushes. And then we heard like sirens, police cars. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's like, uh, and we're in these bushes. And then I think Fu, like, it, it looked like he, Cut a major artery or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was a lot of blood, and he's like, "You know, I need to go to the hospital." And I was like, "Guys, we're, we're not. We're not. We're, not we're, we're, we're holding tight here." Yeah. Um. And um. Yeah. We had to hang out in these bushes for two hours. You know. Um. And then when we got back, we were all staying at my uncle's house, and it was uh, it was like through had like blood all over him, like his jeans were ripped, and I was like, "Buddy, yeah, we can't go to my oh uncle's my house with you." I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. So apologies, Foo, like if you hear this, but like... Uh, you got Foo. It, it just wasn't well. a good look at the time for my uncle, but yeah. So what happened to Foo? What, you did... I don't know what happened to him, but I don't think any of my pieces made it into the next bomb alert. Uh, <laughs> they got censored. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Foo. <laughs> but I've never seen those pictures, by the way, because uh, yeah, I w- wouldn't mind seeing them. I think that's part of the problem, isn't it? It's a lot of energy, a lot of work, and then you don't... Like you were saying yeah. earlier, you said, you know, the amount of Kodak disposable cameras that you had yeah. to dash. I mean, yeah, yeah. those, those, yeah. Sometimes we just used to go out, no no Kodaks, you know. Like mm. It's just, just did it, you mm. know. Yeah. What's the repercussions of something like this? Got like, you know, what, what, what repercussions have you been faced with? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I got in a bit of trouble. I mean, like, uh, I got raided. I, I, I got banned from London Underground for two years. Uh, uh, you know, like, it went through that whole thing. I think, you know, uh, you know, like they didn't 
it, it didn't all go through, you know. So uh, mm. I got, um, you know, got off with a lot of stuff, which was great. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, is yeah, the, the repercussions were at that time. I was looking at Feltham, mm. um, which was actually kind of crazy. But um, you know, as a kid, which I think is kind of wrong, and I'm sure there's a lot of kids out there today. Um, you know, I was from a good family, whatever. But uh, I aspired to go and ended up in Feltham. I was like, fuck, that, that sounds like a great idea. You know, like everyone's talking about it. Yeah, I'm in Swan Wing, I'm in Swallow Wing. I'm like, all the wings were named after birds. You know, yeah. that's like, you know, everyone came out and they're like talking about the stories. And I was like, oh, that's the... That's the life. Yeah, that's, that, that's it. But thank God I never ended up there. But uh, it was like, you know, so I was quite bait, you know, and quite hot and everything I did because really? I didn't really care yeah. uh, if I did end up there. So, that was the general vibe on the street. Yeah. I remember that very well that you know you were very notorious in your opinions and your the directness in yeah. how you operated. Yeah, I mean I just I think it was us as a crew as SB back then original SB crew um you know like uh, back then we just we were just young naive impressionable mm. and yeah we were just trying to make a name for ourselves. Um you know one thing I'd say positive well there's a lot of positive things that came out of it but for me what came out of graffiti was like you know, like, I wanted to get fame. You know, mm. that's what you wanted to do. Mm. And for me, it made everything you wanted to do achievable. And I achieved what I wanted to achieve at the age of, like, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I wanted my name up there. Mm. You know, I wanted to see a train go by and my name on the side of it. You know, like, whether it be on the undercarriage or on the main bit, I wanted to get on a train and see my name scratchied on a window. You know, like... Mm. And it was like, I, I achieved it, you know, yeah. like uh, at the time I was like, you know, 17, you know, like, you know, like then the world's your oyster, like, anything's possible. What is that like? Give me more description of what that is like to almost not remember when you did a thing, but you show up to a space and go, oh, I've done that as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fucking I did that. Yeah. Jesus, I'm everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's that... What is it, does that do to you? I remember, it's a funny story, it was uh, after my court case... I got on a train with my dad, and my dad was like, Nikki, so was it you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was like, and I sit on the train, because he'd seen, he'd seen the scholar tag on the on the side of the train. On the We managed to get on a carriage, and there was a scholar, scratchiti, whatever you want to call it, scratchy mm. on the on the window. And he's like, was it you? And I was like, yeah, dad, it was me. I did it all, you know, like, you know, like, really like. That proudest know, punch yeah, proud, about yeah, 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 <laughs> it was me. And then my dad just got so mad with me. Um, and then I was just like, I had to just spin it around real quick. I was like, no, dad, I'm just joking. You know, like, it was just a joke. Of course it wasn't me. You know, um, the truth comes out now. <laughs> but, uh, the funny thing was, is, uh, he found one time he found my, my, my photo book with all my trains in it. And I was like, you know, like, I had some friends around and stuff like that. And he's like, I, I found this. I found, I found your book. He's like, very impressive. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, as long as you don't do it on public property. And I'm like. It was my tube book. <laughs> <laughs> Every single picture was on the side of a tube train with like people standing in front of it, you know, like people with balaclavas on with spray cans. And it's just, I guess my dad hasn't got great vision. That's incredible. <laughs> Big up pops. <laughs> Is he still with us? Yeah, he's still with us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. just avoid this podcast yeah. at all costs. <laughs> hey, listen, it's all hindsight. It's all back in the day. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, irrelevant now. It's a nice little story. Yeah. Uh, cowboys and Indians. It's just a normal conversation, you understand. Um, you did try, <laughs> didn't you? you? You tried writing Gecko directly yeah, so after. At, at one point, yeah, as, as I had a bit of heat, I, I, I switched. Uh, I doubt a lot of people know, but uh, yeah, I changed my tag to Gecko. The reason why Gecko was because uh, I like the heat. Mm. You know, I was like, Gecko's like the heat. That's it. I'm I'm sure you thought yeah, through yeah, these yeah, names, yeah, right? Yeah, I had to have a little narrative behind it. Yeah. Um, um, so like, uh, yeah, so that was it. Gecko, G-E-K-O. Um, yeah, I did a few pieces with it. Actually, it's quite funny. Um, I was down a Hall of Fame. I forget where it was, Watford or something like that. Um, and I remember doing a piece there. I did a Gecko piece and these little kids that must have been like 15 or 14 they're like oh yeah what you, what'd you write i'm like gecko i never heard of you yeah and anyway so i was like you know put put props up you know like you know put the scent off so i put up a scholar next to their chang and they're like oh you know scholar do you, you know scholar and 
Oh, and God, like, that's uh, like, yeah, it's like, oh, I heard, I heard a story about Scott. I was like, oh, yeah, tell me about it. Oh, yeah, he was down some alleyway and the feds came and they caught him. And like, like they had all these stories about me. <laughs> you know, really? Like, none of them were true. <laughs> I love and they it. just like these little kids had all this, these fantasy stories that someone had told them about me as a scholar. And it was just like, it was, fucking it was like, genius. It was a great insight into it all. You know, yeah. like, and I had to sit there and just like, you know, no, I'm Gecko. The yeah. mythology of yeah. scholar. Yeah. That's funny, isn't it? Not many people hold that kind of uh, mythology, you know. People try their best to attain it. Yeah. It's great when, the, 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 you know, it just gets loose like wildfire. And it's really, <laughs> yeah. it's all of it, you know. Yeah. The whole thing becomes one big facade, doesn't it? It was good, yeah. I mean, I think just as I was finishing, I think it all became, started coming online. You know, there was that, what was it, Digital, digital Jungle? jungle yeah. yeah. And there was all those chat rooms where people used to chat and stuff like that. And then people used to make compilations and stuff of all the work you'd done or whatever. Mm. And it's like, but... And I never went, ended up down that rabbit hole, but um, of but like someone used to send me a screenshots or something of like some chats that people had seen saying in a chat mm. room. And but I'm like, yes, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's funny. That's so your era. Yeah. The, the beginning of chat rooms, yeah. digital jungle. Yeah. And... I met some random kid in New York. Uh, he's pretty old, but um, and he was like, you know, I told him, I, you know, I used to write graffiti. And so I would you write for school. He's like, oh, I met you one time. Um, and I was like, what? Like, was I nice to you? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, uh, <laughs> it yeah, we were cool? in a, we were in a, what was it? I had a high coat plot, which was a type of paint. Like, and we were in a, we were in a paint shop, and you were there, you were racking, and you just, and you said, you said, he came up to me and said, do you write? And I was like, yeah, I write scholar. And then I was like, and then I just got him and just stood him there. He said, I, I dragged him over and she said, stand there. <laughs> like, I stood him there all. and I just started taking everything. And I said, see you later. And like gave him a fist and just like walked straight out. And he's like, oh, I remember it. Like, you know, you just told me to stand there. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Used him as a little like hiding, hiding spot so I can stash all the paint. It's just like genuinely like your lifestyle to the wire. It's just I don't know. It's it's fun. It's just a whole different era, you know. Like it's just it's just weird to look back at that. What's with the obsessiveness though? Is that something that's a personal? Is that a trait in you? When you say like, uh, oh, there's a clear obsession obsessiveness with with graph. Yeah. Is that something that you know? Um, I mean, I I I think I you know, I mean, I loved I loved graph. I loved everything about it. I was deep in the culture. And I felt like once I removed myself from it, I was either all in or all out, you know? Like, I couldn't be, like, peripheral. Mm. You know, I couldn't come in and just, like, you know, do a little bit Part here, time. do a little bit there. Yeah. No, like, you know, like, I was I was living it. You know, mm. we were all living it at the time. Um, what allows what allows people to live it? Is it the convenience of being with mum and dad or I mean, family? A, not getting caught. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it always help. You know, like, <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, like, you know, like I told you, I was from a broken house and, like, you know, like, my like I uh, you know I lived in a house and my dad was never there my mum was never there so like it was like you know it was like I was able to do whatever I wanted to do mm. you know um, and I think that that was able that's why I was able to live it you know and then you know we didn't pay for anything mm. you know and you know what came with sticky fingers is you, there's other things that should stick to your fingers mm. and you'd make some money out of that you know mm. <laughs> so like there was ways of funding it as well you know mm. did the path get darker for you. Pardon? Did the path get darker for you? Uh, no, I mean, like, you know, like, I think when it gets dark is when you get arrested and when you get done, you know, mm. like, so yeah. it never, never really got in a bad space for me. Uh, I was very fortunate, touch mm. wood. Um, but, you know, it could have easily gone either way. It's like sliding mm. doors, you know. Yeah. It's quite an analogy with the tube train. Yeah. Okay, see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, for its time, you know. There was different punishments, different set of, uh, yeah, different players on the old chessboard, wasn't there? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I paid, like, it's crazy, I paid for my own way for university, I did all that stuff, I, you know, I, I was always hustling, mm -hmm. you know? I was like the younger kid, um, I was young, youngest kid in my crew, um, but then I was the one, like, you know... Making more adult moves. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, that was it. Um, so where did that come from? I don't, well, the funny thing is, I never I, when as as I was young, I never used to smoke and stuff like that. Hmm. And all my mates used to smoke, and they always used to like, oh, can you give us two pound, five pound. We've got to buy a drawer. We've got to do this and that. Hmm. I was like, 
I didn't get involved in this stuff, and I'm giving money, money for, for it. Money for it, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and buy a little eighth, and I'm going to, like, sell it to them. <laughs> and then, Yo, that's yeah, entrepreneurial yeah, yeah. right there. And then uh, it just moved on, you know? Really? Um, yeah. Got to higher, higher I levels. Be, I just became a very good middleman, you know? Really? Um, and did my thing, you know, just kept my head low, you know? Wow. That's crazy. So what brought you to New York? So New York was, I mean... Among other places. I mean, I uh, actually needed to get out of what I was doing. So like I, was, I was just talking about yeah. the middleman thing. I did the middleman thing and uh, did, I was quite successful. Like, I mean, I think at the age of 21, I bought my own house, like off my own back, you know. See, I always was missing a trick, man. And I was like, you know, you know I, was, I, was, I, was, I wasn't destined to be... In this kind of business, mm. uh, you know, like you know, I'm a scholar. Mm. You know? Come on, son, come yeah, on, so give me that. Like, I was like, you know, so I was like, that's it. I had a little goal. I was like, buy my house, I'd get out. So I got out, moved to New York. Um, uh, you know, it helped out a girlfriend there as well. Mm. Um, so I moved to New York and uh, focused on what I'd studied on at art school, which was graphic design, design, and I went out there and worked for a, a magazine and an ad agency. Man. So that's where your artistical talents really were put to, yeah, yeah. to, so, to wider use. Yeah, no, I used to, uh, yeah, I used to, I used to design all the flyers for like uh, Wu Tang and Slick Rick and Mob Deep and like all that stuff. So I used to do a lot of like, what, what like the graphics of their what their logos? No, no, is? not their actual album covers. I used to do all these flyers for the gigs. Wow. We used to do like uh, I mentioned that earlier, but like 32, 32 uh, gigs a year for Wu Tang Clan, for example. <laughs> So then, like, oh, every 36, gig. no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could have been 36, it I don't know. Been 36, it would have been good. My math is bad, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we used to do a lot a year. And then, uh, so then that, that's been a fly, flyer for each event. Um, so then we used to do all of that. It's a good money in that. It wasn't great money, but it was like, you know, I was... Can we turn clown, man? What do you want? Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I was young, fresh, you know, like, uh, I was, like, in New York City. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I was just loving life. You, you did know, not like, want to paint in New York at any given point? Um, I didn't paint, so when I moved to New York, I, I basically... Th- I, I was on like two strikes, three, nearly three strikes or whatever. And like, if if you if you got a charge or whatever, you can't you can't travel to America. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, so I was like, frig, you know, like I need to I need to stop everything. Mm. So I stopped everything. When I was in New York, I was like, I had all these stories about a clock. I don't know if you remember that guy from Course, Paris. Of course, legend. Apparently, he got caught in New York, and they went back to the BTP or the, whatever the French version of yeah, that in yeah. uh, in Paris, and he just got rinsed. Um, so I was like, I don't want to be that guy, you know. Um, so I got to just, I just stopped. I stopped graffiti altogether. It was a crazy time back then as well. Like yeah. the zero tolerance was bad enough in UK, London, yeah. New York. Forget it. Yeah, I should say that O'Clock from Paris. That guy crushed it. Dude. Bruh, like, O'Clock I mean, like, was a d- that and guy still was just, a dawn, was just bro. insane. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. His, his 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 block letters, oh. them alone, was just like fucking killer. Of touring Paris and touring France and going to Paris and she's like, yo, o'clock. I mean, what a name as well. Yeah, no, it's so sick. Yeah, flows well too. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Uh, I didn't yeah. even think about that. That's yeah. cold. Yeah. Um, and you uh, you mentioned a story about uh, serving Ray Kwan as well, right? Was it Frank magazine you were part Frank of? Frank 151. It yeah, was the... like a little subculture magazine. Yeah. It was about like, I don't know. I loved them. Like tiny, you know, pocket yeah. size, put it in the back of your pocket. That's right. A real subculture magazine. Love it. Uh, it was like, it was it was kind of cool. It was a free magazine. We did like 250,000 issues a, a quarter. Um, and yeah, it was free. But basically mm. we got our money from advertisements. So like someone like Reebok would go like, hey, we want to do an advert with Jay-Z. And we'd be like, no, no, that's, that's not how it works. We're going to do an advert with Stay High 149 mm. and you're going to pay for the photo shoot and you're going to pay for the space in our ad so that's what we do so we love do love that that's a great that, that's a great model yeah so we'd have like Stay High 149 wearing a pair of Reeboks on the subway with a spray can you know like 55 year old man at the time you know like uh, so yeah. you become hold on hold on light bulb is just switched on so you would for the for the format of the magazine, you would get a writer or another person that is would be loosely credible and affiliated towards the the, the audience of the magazine. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so you'd pair them up like a like. Yeah. A, so that's it. So I think there's uh, uh, 
it was like we got some boxer from Brooklyn one time. We got like some like you know like st skateboarder. We could brand match them. We started building like there's you know the subculture existed, but all the ads at the time in any magazine or anything were yeah. all just mainstream generic shit. You know yeah like you know puffy so do it or mace yeah exactly do. exactly. So we were just bringing it back to the origins and the culture. We get the downtown like you know dealer. You know, like, yeah. like on the photo shoot, you know, doing the photo shoot with him, you know, like, and people would be like, who, do, like, some people would be like, who the fuck is he? And some people would be like, that's, that's cool the fucking shit. G, dude. Like, that, Bruv, that is, that know? is subculture in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. That's the best bit about it. I mean, New York City is a great city for like network, subculture, for just like yeah. getting out there. Well, it's like I who learned, you know, in it. I learned, that shit. I learned a lot from New York City. So, like, the way I, my analogy is like, you know, you got a, you got some cards and you're like, you know, London was like this. Everyone had their cards close to their chest. Mm. You're like, who do you know? You're like, oh, so I don't typical. Know. I don't know. Here, yeah. You know, like, here's the Joker. You mm. know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And New York was like, yo, son, what you got? All my cards are on the table. Yeah. You want this? You want that? You want this? You want that? And That's going like, to cost you that. That's going to yeah, cost you yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it wasn't even like, it was just like, you know, like, it was just network, network, network. Yeah. And, you know, if you said you were going to meet someone... I meet you tomorrow. You have to meet them. If you didn't meet them, you bump into them four or five times that yeah. week, yeah, yeah. and it'd be awkward. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you said you're going to do something, you do it. You know, and everyone knew everyone. You know, so God, like, I love that. And then like all the I want to, all the big fish from all the little ponds around the world mm. all congregated in New York City, which was like the big, big, big pond. Mm. You know, so like all these little like you know people from Munich, people from Vegas, people from like you know whatever it is, Berlin, London, <laughs> Paris. Descend. You know, all end up there mm. and they're all big fish in their own rights and they're all there in the melting pot trying to figure out who's who's what's what like all my connections through life are from living in new york city for three years you know um just like meeting people who are coming there you know who are top of their game from where they came from yeah so how old how old would you have been in new york in that three years 23 22 23 Dude, that's just fucking crazy that's crazy that's a life in itself yeah it was good. Yeah. So I went to I, I got a I went to art school there as well. I got I got a scholarship there to, at an art school. About as well. time, finally yeah. a scholarship, yeah, mate. Yeah. Another scholarship, yeah. Yo. So I, got, I went to art school there, School of Visual Arts, um, and uh, yeah, no, it was good. So I was out there. It was, it was pretty boring when I was there. Did you have like a, a vision of what you wanted to achieve out of? "Quote unquote life being in New York. I mean, this is you're in the epicenter of what could feel could often feel like the centre of the fucking earth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the energy in that city is incredible. Yeah. I'm not sure what it's like now. God knows how much gentrification, yeah. etc. But like for its time, you must have been man. I can do anything. I mean, yeah. I mean, like you know, you're young. Yeah. You're like you know, like I was 21, whatever, 22, 23." Um, and, uh, yeah, I was like at the heart of it, whatever it was, subculture, whatever it was, like there was like the, I think the best nightclub in New York was Bungalow Eights, which we called Bung mm. Your Nose Eights. Um, <laughs> and literally like, uh, I did an art exhibition inside there with the Frank magazine. And it's just like, I just turn up with the magazine, just show them it, you know, they let me in. It's like, you know, you'd have everyone in there from every celeb, every man and his dog there who's like who's who's of New York or, or the world would be in there and just be like rolling in there as a 23-year-old think you're on top of the world. Yeah. You know? it was, the uh, calling card, in yeah, you go. Yeah, Lindsay Lohan, that was the, that that was was the regular era, back yeah, then. Yeah, 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 that was it. What was her name? Uh, um, what's it? Ronson's, Mark Ronson's yeah. sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it was that kind yeah, of fraternity. Yeah, 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 that was it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. That what's was her name, it. Ronson? I forget her name. Come uh, Sarah, what's it? No. Sarah? No. I it was. Um, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Short hair. Yeah, and DJ. Paris Hilton. Um, yeah, Paris Hilton, all those all people. That, that. Talk to me about the Acton layup. Um, yeah, so like this one layup in uh, Acton was like, it was, so like uh, when, you know, like I actually did this layup one time with Mace and like when me and Mace did it, uh, it was like, you know, he had a little map of like where the cameras were. We I, This is when we commando sort of like wriggled along the floor for like, you know, a mile, you know, to hide the cap, hide mm. from the camera. And, and you like, you know, did our piece in the train, got a flick and got out of there. And then this time it was like 20 riders. I think Mace came with me as well this time as well. And I think, uh, and then it was just like, there was just so many of us. It was just like, you couldn't turn back. Mace was just like, I think he was uneasy. But you know, like, I don't know. I can imagine. Mace, actually, this could be all wrong. I don't know if Mace was there. Uh, it was Chang. Anyway, we all went there to do this, uh, do that. There was 20 riders there. It was like end to end. Like we were like trying to bully, like you're trying to, you had to find a space on the car to paint because it was just riders end to end of this, oh. this train. 
but we were making so much noise and there was so much rattling of spray cans. Mm. Like we literally, within like, you know, five minutes of us there, you know, it just came on top. Really? And then just, just imagine like 20 riders just like scattering. It was like, you know, mice just like. Nothing. In my mind, that, that nothing sends that more anxiety in, in, into my head than the idea that in my dreams having to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, I guess the whole thing was, like, safer in numbers, you know, like, um, in my head, I was like, there's so many of them, like, I'm definitely going to be the one that's going to get away. <laughs> you know? Yeah, true. It's like the wildebeest yeah, with, the, with, yeah. the, with the tigers, right? Yeah. Like, someone's going to get it. Yeah. Did you, ever, did you ever base the law of average on that? Like, someone's um, going to get it. I mean, I, I, you know, I always look at averages for everything. Like, what's the probability of getting caught? What's this? What's that? Mm. You know, like... Mm. You have to weigh it up all the time, yeah. you know. Is that um, part of that? Is that part? Because you know, you you're a business mind. Is that is that some big business acumen that you can kind of take to to any scenario? Um, Do you weigh out the yeah, pros and cons? Yeah, of things like? yeah, weigh out pros and cons. I think that's life, isn't it? Weigh weigh out pros and cons of like what's going to work, what's not going to work, uh, what's risky, what's not risky. But I think in graffiti, I mean, you know, like for me, as I told you, as a kid, which I think is insane, and there's probably people out there with these thoughts that you know, I aspired. My my worst case scenario was I could have felt it and I'd come out with a little badge. Mm. You know? Badge of honour. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Can so, you imagine what you'd be now? Yeah, I don't know. You know? Um, so Not there's anything wrong with it. We got everyone felt yeah. approved. No, I know a load, load of friends who went there, yeah. obviously. Um, some have come out and been career criminals, you know, mm -hmm. and still are to this day. Mm. Uh, I see them in the papers. <laughs> you know? As you do, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's funny, like. Uh, yeah, it can. It's, 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 it's a little knife edge, you know, mm. which way it can go. Mm. Has it got too close before? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, nearly. You know, that time I had the court case which went on a long time. Another time I got caught with, uh, what was it, Alec Monopoly. Do you ever, yeah, see, ever yeah, seen that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, like the, name, he's yeah. like the Hollywood graffiti artist. Yeah. So, uh Actually, uh, you know, like, uh, he does this thing now, he does these canvases, sells them for, like, hundreds of thousands, mm. and he's got, like, five Lamborghinis, two Ferraris, and two Rolls Royces, and, like... Get some of that in you. Yeah. Yes, please. Flies on paper jets everywhere and does whatever he does. Um, but, uh, yeah, but he was, back in the day, in L.A. and New York, he was up as a graffiti writer. That's <laughs> right, Alec, you know, and Crazy. he was up. So he, he did his... He paid his dues, mm. he got up, he did his illegal shit... Um, and, you know, like, respect to him, and then he figured out a way how to monetize it. Mm. You know, actually what happened was he had a Hollywood agent um, who uh, basically was an agent for all the stars and was like, hey, I'm going to make you famous. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I bet that. And uh, <laughs> so just uh, it, it never looked back since then, you know. <gasps> yeah. But there's loads of stories like that, especially in America. Mm. Because all it takes is that one door yeah, I mean, Well, the thing about America door is to open. It's, it's like, you know, like... So everyone wants to make it big there. You know, yeah. like it's, once you're, once you're big in America, like you just need to be big in one city. If you're big in New York, then it'll just spread across America. Mm. You know, it's America, it's like, you know, whatever it is, 20 times the size of the UK. Mm. In the UK, or you're big in Germany, or you're big in London, you're going to be big in one city. Then you've got to figure out how to break into these other, like France, mm. Germany, that's a different language, Spain, whatever Well, London's is. always been like an entry hole for yeah. the European PR yeah. or whatever anyway, you know. Yeah. It's, it's changed a lot, obviously, but uh, there's still there is sort of this anchor entry route into a lot of, you know, this side of the world yeah. through the press of the UK. Yeah, I mean, it's like, well, yeah, it's 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 the route into Europe for like a lot of, let's say, American mm. artists that come from the UK and then go into Europe. Yeah, um, and probably the same way out as well. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, we're, we're in a unique spot. As mm. I said, I think you know, London is the epicenter. Mm, yeah, <laughs> totally. Know? And with bigger corporate, you know, organisations using street art to promote their, you know, their their uh, brands and the likes of Banksy and now Ten Foot. And yeah, I mean, like you know, I know the Palace guys, you know, um, and yeah, they did some Ten Foot collab. They did a they did a zombie collab as well. Yeah. Big up Gareth. Um, yeah, 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 yeah no, Gareth, what's up? Um, so uh, yeah, no, they, you know, like that's what it is. I mean, look at Louis Vuitton. Look at like you know. Virgil Abloh, whatever, mm. you know, like he did, he, he got Futura in and, and, and did a whole, you know, collection with Futura. And it's like, I did a magazine, Frank 151 with Futura, you know, yeah, like crazy. back in the day, 20 years ago, yeah. you know, like, and, and that's where it is now, you know. Mm. Um, you know, look at Cause, you know, like uh, what yeah. he does. It's, 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 it's mainstream now. So like, mm. you know, we were part of the subculture, but now it's like mainstream pop culture. It is mainstream now, you isn't know? it? It's mainstream. It's but kind it's of like, that's what it's become. 
But I think, you know, like... I think How do you feel about that? I mean, it's, I think it's great. But I, I think uh, I think what goes missing is all the, the you know, the layers underneath it, the subculture. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, as a graffiti writer, I, I didn't care about what someone else thought. I only cared about what someone within the graffiti culture thought. thought yeah. You know, I didn't care about what my mum thought. I didn't care about what my dad thought. I didn't care what my mate's friend thought. He didn't know mm. anything about graffiti. I didn't care. Like, it was just for me... I wanted to work within the ecosystem of graffiti and the graffiti culture within London. You know, mm -hmm. that was my thing. You know, mm -hmm. um, how does how how would how would one get themselves out into the broader public? Well, there for those that you know want to do a Frank magazine or want to you know do the Alec Monopoly yeah. jaunt. You know, go and do things like that. What do you think that how do you get out of that mindset of, you know, being in your own scene and community and thinking outwardly? Well, I think, well, I think, you know, the positives right now is there's, there's an easy way how to monetize graffiti. Um, you know, Ten First, I guess, is doing it, you know, like, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know how much he's monetizing it, but whatever, but it's, it's, it's e like there's an easy segue from graffiti now into mm. what you do as long as you're passionate. And I think what it comes down to, it's really like you've got to be passionate about what you do mm. to make a noise, you know. Mm. Um, you know, look at zombies, like been doing it f f forever since I've yeah. known, yeah. but like you know, he's doing what he's doing, and like Highly that, regarded, that, that yeah. collab he did with Palace was pretty epic, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, shout out to Zombie, I painted with him once, yeah, yeah, um, shout out Zombie. Uh, and then yeah, but I think it's just I think it's got to be, I think you got to be passionate about what you do, and you got to focus on what you do, and 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 you know like everything everything comes out of that. You mm. know you got to believe in yourself. You mm. know? What's the future? What's the future for you, sir? Future, the future for me. I'm a, a crazy segue actually. I've been in fashion for like twenty years. I'm still focused on fashion, but it's all about. Many things saving the planet. Yeah. And all about sustainability, saving nice. the planet, trying yeah. to figure out new ways how to make the planet a better place. Brilliant. Um, so that's the future for me, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Keeping it moving like that. Yeah. And fashion has become your thing for Tempest. Yeah, I'm like heavily involved in fashion. I've worked from every, everyone from Nike to Adidas to Puma to Christian Dior mm. to whatever it may be, mm. like every, I've worked with most global brands and that's sort of what I sort of focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like uh, I remember it was probably Chang who got me into the whole graphic fashion stuff. Um, mm. But he was like, yeah, it's like, you know, like I started designing graphic tees, that was it. And it was like, yeah, if you see someone wearing a tee, it's like getting up. <laughs> you know, like, kind of is, technically. It's like, it, was like, it was like, you know, the next level. You yeah. know, like, it's like, okay, someone will just walk down the street with a tee I designed, mm. you know, and that was it. So it's just like, you know, how do you get out there? Um, but if you're going to use, like, graffiti as a platform to move yourself forward, and if you're making a name for yourself in graffiti, it's very easy, easily replicable, replicable in life. Yeah, hundred uh, percent is yeah. And if you've done it in graffiti and you made a name for yourself, well done. And like, that's all it takes. Yeah. You know, repeat it, that process. Yeah, yeah. It, in it, everything. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just like you know, persistence, energy, um, you know, passion. Yeah. And you'll get there. Yeah. You know, and and that's it. And that's what I think any good graffiti writer had. And then I think it's sad when you think about those kids going to jail or whatever it may be, adults, um, is. And and they and they get misguided. It's like no, this someone's got this person's got something which is driven mm. within them, to go out every night and get your name up on a train in a street and wherever it may be, is dedication, passion. So you need to figure out how you can channel that because that guy will be the next billionaire. Could be, you know, like, you know, totally utterly. That is exactly what this podcast is about. Yeah, you know, five hundred examples of such. Yeah, because. Without that tenaciousness, not only do you not find the next million yeah, billionaire, yeah. but for those who want to be that, but also you've got to look behind as well and realise that, you know, there's a lot more worse crimes out there. And if being a creative vandal, doing graph, gets someone away from being part of a gang, yeah. going down that road, yeah. then yeah, so be it. I think, you know, the other thing is as well, 
Because I've always wanted to do, at some point I'll figure it out to help to help the youth, you know, like do some youth work or whatever. But, you know, if someone showed me how to set, take buy an apple and sell it at a profit, I would have, I would have been selling apples, you know? <laughs> if someone didn't show me how to take an apple and sell it at a profit, someone showed me how to take something else and mm. sell it at a profit, mm. and were happy to make give me a loan mm. on the process of doing that. So, of course, I took them up on that offer, mm. you know, and I made a success out of it. But it's like, I think, I think it's how do you channel, you know, all of that, you know, with the youth, mm. you know, like give them, like how do we offer them something that they can make tangible money out of? Because it's as simple They're as buying an apple well, for, for X and selling it for yeah. Y, you know. Um, but yeah. It's more complicated now and for a lot of kids it's too much effort, isn't it? Yeah. But we're, we all suffered in that at one stage or another. <laughs> the tenaciousness of graffiti writers, it knows no bounds and I fucking love it. And like you say, you learn a lot. You yeah. learn a lot from yeah. that. My well, brother, it's a pleasure having you on, man. All right, cool, man. Good Thank vibes. You. Yeah, no, good. Fucking scholar in the house, you know what I mean? Just another day in the house. Of course it ain't. Oh, can Legends. I give you a shout out? Get your shout outs yeah. in right now. Uh, just big shout out to Chang, uh, Amon, Re, Blink, Mesk, Mace, Touch, Come on. Gash, Tense, Fro, one Ooh, of the originals, yeah. uh, FLS, Jabs, Wrench, Dest, who's old school Dest, Ooh, and uh, Baps, Dems, and Never. That that is one hell of a name and order. That's fucking great. Yeah. Big up for the shout outs. Fucking Jeez. scholars podcast, man. Uh don't talk to me, I wouldn't, alright? Crumb don't pay, but neither did I. Alright, you stay lucky people. Be easy. Be easy. That was so fucking good. Keep your brain.